our next guest, we've got the lovely Joel Murphy, who is uh, one of our board members, as well as just an all-around rad dude who does all kinds of things. You probably know him online as Biomurph, because if there's one thing a Murph loves, it's biology. This is the <laughs> I'm, I'm still just receiving horse. All right. Thank you. That's a great introduction. <laughs> all right. Well, take it away, Joel. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, about the facts. Back in the 90s, I worked at a company that made a small desktop robotic kit, and they had a fax machine. And um, I don't know if I should say this, but um, I taped together like three or four sheets of paper and put them into a fax machine that I had picked up. So it would just continually run in a loop and, and keep printing, keep sending, keep sending, keep sending. I'm and, starting um, to suspect that that is what is happening with Endless Force. Yeah, because I could just so, turn on the fax machine and hit send and then go to sleep and it would just send all night. Yeah. So I had to um, I had to buy another roll of paper for my boss after I did that. <laughs> well, we will keep, keep you updated on the Endless Horse. The situation. Endless Horse. Yeah, Endless but, Horse uh, problems. Page six of the second Endless Horse. Oh my God, I love that. Cool. But, uh, maybe, uh, so Anyway, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I'm uh, I'm Joel Murphy, known as Biomurph, pretty much everywhere. Um, uh, just a short piece about me, if you don't know me, I um, <clears throat> I cut my teeth making kinetic sculpture back in the '90s and uh, early 2000s. Unfortunately, that doesn't make money, uh, but making cool stuff for other people does make money. So I started a consulting company, and at the same time, back in 2006, I taught at Parsons uh, School of Design in New York City a class called Physical Computing and um, uh, watched the rise of open source hardware kind of grow up around me. It was, uh, it was wonderful. I first taught with pick chips because I figured if these grads had to learn anything, it was how to really know what's going on at the metal level of what you're trying to do. Um, then Arduino came and just basically stole the show. Um, and uh, so, you know, uh, I like to see I was... Uh, uh, I was into open source before open source, <laughs> but anyway, so let me um, take on a tour of my lab. I'm gonna uh, switch this camera around so that you can see out the front or the back. What is it, front back? All right, so uh, you're in my backyard. We're in Troy, New York. It's afternoon, uh, afternoon, fall, early fall, and let's go inside. So that's the office place where office-y things happen and printy, printy things happen over there. This is the shipping and receiving section. I've got a lot of verticality, a lot of verticality. I'm totally not making use of it. So I've got to figure that out. Um, uh, so this is, as I said, shipping and receiving. Um, I've got a lot of supplies. I probably have way too many supplies, but, you know, it's what you get. There's some tchotchkes up there for those of you who know what those are. That's kind of fun stuff. And um, uh, over here is the bookshelf. I wanted to give you a view of like what's going on in the bookshelf. Uh, all those guys. Mims is here. Mims is in the house. And uh, what else have we got? Microcontrollers and yeah. And the Don't Panic book, which is the introduction to physics book. I bought that because I couldn't believe the title it was so amazing. Uh, and so we'll go in through the paint area. Got a lot of paint because I own this house and it's full of paint covered all over in different colors of paint. Oh, and what's this? Oh, oh, is that a QR code for how to become a member of Oshawa? Wow, that's great. Take a good hard look at that. Okay, cool. So this is the lab. Uh, again, with the high ceilings, I'm totally not making use of all the verticality I have, but let's go over here and take a look from this corner. We'll do a can anti-clockwise. This is Ingi. He, uh, he was made by a friend of mine named Ingi, um, and that was a gift to me when I started OpenBCI from him. He lives out in all Los Angeles, does uh, work for the film industry. This is my Taz Mini 2. It's a freaking workhorse. I love this thing. I swear I didn't want to get a 3D printer because I didn't want to have a hobby. And then Lulzbot came out with self-leveling bed. And I got to say, it's kind of where it's at. There's a bunch of colors, 
bunch of colors. I have some I have some nylon that I really got to get rid of. So if anyone wants nylon, kind of reach out to me about that. Um, here's stuff, stuff and things, things you kind of probably know about a little bit, things and stuff, ongoing projects, tape, got a big box of tape there, some raw materials. Um, I like to call this the tower of clients. This is like boxes full of stuff that I do for other people. Um, some of them are coded, some of them are obvious. <laughs> we'll talk about some hardware that I made before too. There's the tool chest. Uh, you know, I don't know how interesting you think you, you guys find this stuff, but um, you know, I don't think anyone's given a tour yet on their of their lab today. I've got hardware because I make hardware. So I've got screws and nuts and bolts and stuff. You know, I love using cardboard boxes, especially printer boxes, as uh, storage spaces because um it's just they're so handy and this this is a uh, um this is a uh a halloween costume that my friend made from last year and uh it just wound up there somehow right next to it is a um uh a venturi effect vacuum chamber for you know vacuuming out your silicone before you pour it or whatever it is um i've got like a sort of a half-assed uh machine shop set up Excuse my language. Um, this thing sort of works. It's got an XY bed, um, but it's a little rickety, a little rickety. I found this scale on the street here in Troy, and um, it's only off by like three ounces, basically, or three grams. Yeah, three grams. You have to set it like right around there to get to your zero point. Where is it? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little, how you doing? You know, but hey, floats. Um, that's the front front door of the space, and then here's house stuff because you gotta have house stuff when you own a house. So I got a bunch of house stuff, and I have these two connects too, which is I don't know how they wound up here, but I got them. If you want to connect, connect with me. Uh, and this is my uh, this is my e waste recycling bin of stuff that needs to just get thrown in the e waste recycling. Uh, here things start to get a little bit more fun for the electronics uh, know-it-alls in the house. Um, this space is where my O-scope goes, but the O-scope's on the desk. Um, I've got a signal generator, a uh, power bank, and a spark fun uh, reflow. Pieces, parts down here, little bits of stuff, just getting ready to be a part of a project. Uh, and then this thing is really great. I found this. Um, at a local cafe. This is the SR11 TI, SR11 for all of you fanboys. And um, it works ish. It works ish. But um, two of the parts of the first digit don't light up. So I don't know what to do about that. I've got to get in touch with the forums and stuff. Uh, here's the bench, uh, ECO soldering unit. I got a universal clamp working out a soldering project right now. Going to be uh, building up this board, which is, can you see that? The absolute encoder board. Yeah. How about that? So just trying to uh, figure out a, another way to uh, sell encoders to people. We'll see how that goes. Um, and these are the encoders. These are the gray encoders. Gray code is a way to uh, 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 create a rotary encoder that's glitchless, which is kind of cool. And then, okay, here's more stuff. Lots of racks of pieces, parts, and things. Oh, my God. And so I have too many LEDs, too. Way too many LEDs. Okay, cool. How was that? Any questions? We're almost done with the tour. Uh, and then we'll look at some of this cool stuff over here. Uh, Got to have a slop sink in your shop. All right, let's get this thing mounted on the... What's it? Oh, shit. I think I've...
Maybe uh, we for a moment. Maybe we'll just, we. Uh, just, uh, there oh, I am. Uh, You're back. He's back. Found you. Found you. Whew. All right. So this is the collection of badges that I was able to pull out of my stuff and things. I forget what year this one is, but that's like one of the most awesome badges ever, the Lego badge. Uh, we've got a bunch of Oshawa, some KaiCon, DefCon. Um, this was the 2019 Hackaday badge. Battery count tax, a little crusty. I don't know about that one. Um, and then I got this badge life from DefCon 27 because I made a badge based on this, which is the open drop, which is a um, an open source electro wedding on display board, EWOD. So essentially what you're able to do is with a high voltage generator in the back, you can move droplets around this area. You can draw them out from these reservoirs and move them around and mix them up and do all kinds of science. It's pretty, pretty freaking cool. That's the, um, that's the back. Those are the high voltage, uh, basically like shift registers or multiplexers there at the bottom with big guys. Um, and I think Alicia knows what this is. This is the, uh, the build upons light up board. That was fun. Um, and then I was really psyched to see the stuff earlier today of people who are uh, designing circuit boards and really being creative with uh, with uh, manufacturing process. Uh, so these are boards that I made for a friend of mine, Yuri, back in around 27 or 8 or something like that. And so the whole idea is that, so here's here, this is going to show a little bit more of it. There's a nine volt battery snap in the back. So you snap a nine volt battery on that and that's the stand. It just sits on the desk like that right? with the battery in the back, right? And then on the other side, it lights up. So this one has blue LEDs that light up in the, in the anglerfish thing. This one has uh, uh, orange LEDs that flicker on this thing. And this one also has orange LEDs that flicker in the fire on the TV, right? So for this project, I used the cheapest, smallest, micro I could find it was like a I don't know a pick with so little memory that I had to actually use the OSC tune register if you all know what that is in order to grab one more byte to to make my code work um, which was fine with me because it's flickering it doesn't matter if it goes out of tune it's just flicker effect um, so that was really fun it's cool to see people playing around with this um, uh, you know, the possibilities of design and manufacturing. Uh, there's a few more things here. How much time do I have? Uh, Microenergy harvesting. So this is basically microenergy harvesting uh, with an Arduino attached to it. And it sort of worked. It sort of worked. But then other people made it better. Um, this is, as you may know, a pulse sensor, which is a project that I've been working on since 2012. It's open source. I don't know if you can. Right. Uh, and it's an optical heart rate monitor for Arduino. You can get heartbeats in your project, lickety split. And then uh, last year, I wrote a book with Yuri. Heartbeat sensors uh, uh, projects with the heartbeat pulse sensor, and um, it's full of great examples and code and explanations and circuits and how to do it all and you know best practices and you know don't don't screw it up kind of kind of advice. So I advise you all to get this if you want to give me like I don't know penny uh, royalty per book. Um, and then uh, this is a prototype of a bit of swag that I included in the swag bag of 2018 hardware summit. This is a prototype. It's a mouse. Okay. So the USB there, USB connected optical mouse. There's an LED little lens here. And this is the, the little jobby that, that gets all the work done to send the I moved signal to this. This is a, um, basically it's a Leonardo. Okay. Of Arduino fame. So this is the prototype and this is the kit that came with the, the prototype that wound up being in the, I'm not gonna do it, okay. wound up being in the swag bag. Oh, I'm gonna pop it open so bad. So the fun part about this was that um, I made it with a white PCB and you can see there's red buttons here in the kit, right? 
So it looks like a mouse with, with bright red eyes. This is purple, purple switches on a green PCB, not quite the same effect, but you kind of get the idea. Um, and it's hackable with a little playground space here to add your circuits if you want to, whatever. That was a really fun kit, uh, kit to build. I made it because um, I had so many of these things from a previous project. These are the mouse sensing uh, ICs. And I don't think they make them anymore either. Uh, they make some, but they're like, these are end of life. There's some other model out there. So I just was sitting on so many of these things and I had so many of these lenses that actually do the work to get the light into the, into the sensor. I was like, I can't just be, I can't just waste this stuff, right? So I made a kit for Oshawa. Um, and then uh, back in 2019, I worked on a project with my friend Leaf. We made the Open Hack, which is an open source wearable health monitor thing. Counts your steps, counts your pulse. There's the version with the screen, there's the version without the screen. This is the PCB that we made. This is the early prototype. Um, you can tell where this one came from. Uh, one of the things that I'm really uh, uh, happy about this uh, uh, design result is that um, it really does engage that pro, uh, sort of manufacturing process. So what you see here on the end of this board, these are two areas that capture the pin of the watch band. You can see it here. It's capturing the pin of the watch band, right? And I made this, I designed this basically inside, inside there, there's a castellation. And on either side of the board is like basically just a zero ohm resistor, which if you spec it right, could be like a slab of copper or something, a piece of metal. So that's the that's the capture for the watch band. So it's a it's kind of a one-stop shop, right? You order this and it's just ready to go. You don't need to attach it to anything. It's just done-ish. Um, the bummer about this is that this thing right here, this black thing, that's a symboly. And they don't make symbolies anymore. So when I made this, after I made this, simply shut down. And so I've got this thing and it's like, oh, I gotta rerun it, I gotta reroll the whole damn thing on some other stuff, whatever. It didn't go anywhere. I tried to do a Kickstarter on this and it just didn't fly. So there you go. Uh, and this is Timpin. This is an open source hearing aid development platform that I've been making with a team that's funded by NIH and NIDCD, which is the National Institute of Deafness and Communication Disorders. Um, it's not a hearing aid, but it's what people use to design better hearing aids with, uh, which is really cool. Um, our first grant round was five years and we made this, and now we've taken this under another grant to create open source hearing assessment tools. So basically turning this into a full bodied hearing health device. Um, and then you probably know a lot about this one. This is OpenBCI. This is a company that I founded in back in uh, 2014. Here is the very initial first prototype that was made under a grant from DARPA that was funded by the Obama Brain Initiative uh, to create low cost, high quality EEG for non-traditional users. This is what we came out with, our team came out with to satisfy that grant. I designed this board and then this is the work that I put in to make the next gen of that original board. And then here's the first 3D printed EEG headset, which is really kind of crazy looking, but I guess it's cool. And then I've got one minute left and I might be able to pull this off, but this is my latest uh, hack. This is a LCD, it's 32 by 160. And um, I got it for Christmas from my parents because I know I like to hack things. This is back in 2021. 20, and I wanted to just take it apart and see what was inside it. So what's inside it is an ESP32, S2, of course. Um, and this was originally designed as like a as like a deli sign, you know? It would you would be able to program it over the phone, over Wi-Fi to make it say whatever you want. And I said, no, 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 I want to make a fire. So I made a fire. <laughs> I made a fire. And then let me see if I can get this thing to work. Uh, and I made a little fire server. And here's the fire server. And so there's these features you can adjust, right? So if I if I increase the flare rows, that makes the flares go. Oh, I gotta reload. It's gonna have to reload.
Okay, looks like Joel's having a little Wi-Fi situation. There we oh, go. there we go. We can oh, see the yeah, fire. We got there it. We go. Amazing. <laughs> yes, it's so, yeah. on fire. Uh, so there's all these uh, <laughs> adjustments, all these adjustments you can make to the fire and stuff. And it's a little glitchy, but <laughs> yeah. So it's that was it's been super fun um, to just play around with stuff. And this is of course based on open source Arduino libraries that I was able to fork and hack and build upon. You know, um, that's the core sort of. Oh my god! Oh. oh. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Joel. Uh, are there any, you talked about so many different kinds of projects. Are there any links you'd like to share with the community? Uh, any way that people can get in contact with you? Um, I would say that um, I am, I'm Biomurph everywhere. So I'm Biomurph. You can DM me in various um, social uh, networks. You can, um, uh, you can, pretty much guess that my email is biomurph at gmail.com. So you can reach out to me that way too, if you really want to get personal. Um, and uh, Real personal. <laughs> real personal, send me an email. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, well, thank you so, so much. Uh, really cool to see your workspace and all the projects you're working on and the little history tour of all the Oshawa badges. So uh, <laughs> it was great having a chat with you. Yeah, nice to see you guys. It's gonna be so much fun. I'm looking forward to staying up with you. Yay. Amazing. <laughs> we look forward to that too. All right. Um, we do have a little.